Welcome to lesson three, week one of Julia programming for nervous beginners, in which we look at uh, debugging and how you use error messages in debugging. So the aim here is to learn to read the error messages and to use them line by line. After this lesson, you'll be able to find some useful information in Julia's error messages. And each error message is about a single line of code, and so you need to find error in the single line of code and fix all the errors. And then you step through your code line by line, and you fix the errors as you find them. You might even have to go back to lines that you thought were already fixed, and actually you missed an error, and then you have to go back and fix it. So um, let's start by debugging some code that I deliberately created to have errors in it. Um, and the first line I've already typed in, so here it is, and we press enter, and nothing happens. So when that happens, you can interrupt the process by typing control C, and um, try and see what the problem is. So the problem appears to be that uh, uh, hello world, is not responding correctly. We have, let me just repeat this exercise. So if we have hello world and we haven't closed it, then what is happening is that Julia is realizing that you've started the string but you haven't finished it and it's waiting for you to complete the string by entering the delimiter that closes the string, which is of course a double quote character. So we enter it and it says, hello world. Um, with an N there, which perhaps I, I don't like too much, so let me backspace, backspace, and make it hello world in the way that we've had it before. And now I can look at what the second line of code is. And uh, that is uh, this line of code. My string one. And I attempt to run that and it says this is not defined. So now we have an error message. It comes up in red and the important part is the part that is after the error. And it tells us that Prindlin is not defined. So why is Prindlin not defined? Well, because what is actually defined is Prindlin. So what there is is that there is a T missing in this line. And so we put it in and we hit enter and we still have an error. Now that's a bit odd. My string one is perfectly good uh, variable name. What is the problem? Basically what is happening here is that when Julia tries to fetch a value corresponding to this name, it says that there is no name of this kind. And that is the reality. That is what is happening. There is no name. Whatever you may think has happened and why there should be a name, it hasn't happened. So what you need to do, do is to go back to your code to where you think you defined it. Um, and that is up arrow, up arrow. That's this line. This line is an error. You think it created a, 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 a a variable with the name myString1, and Julia knows that it does not, and in fact it doesn't because of that i. So we actually do want to create this variable, and we do that. Please remember that the previous variable mystiring1 is still in the namespace, so it also exists, but what is important for us is that we want to execute this string, this uh, function here, using this variable name. Um, and there it is, and now we can enter it, and then everything is fine as we want it to be. Okay, so that's how debugging works. Um, so this is the, I recommend that you start by learning to debug line by line in this way. You fix a line, you fix a line. Eventually, sometimes you have to go back and fix another line. But um, that is a good way to start because it gives you a small debugging problem at every stage. And because it really trains you to look inside a particular line for exactly where the error might be. And that's a very important skill to have. There are very many other ways in which programmers 
approach debugging. It's a question of style to a certain extent. Um, but that is what you really should um, cultivate. Um, <clears throat> so just a summary. Debugging is an important, I would say, essential skill to learn. The error messages are very useful. It tells you very often very gives you a very good hint of why Julia hasn't counted an error, although the error might not actually be in the line where Julia says when where Julia becomes aware that something is really wrong and it throws an error, it might be because there was an error earlier on and no error in that line at all. Um, I will repeat that line by line output in the REPL is not quite the same as in running a .jl file with the same code. And so when you do your line by line debugging, debugging in the REPL, you might not get errors that come up when you run the code and vice versa. When you do your debugging in the REPL, you might get errors that don't come up in the code. Um, when you want to do line by line output, you want to see only some lines, you want to suppress the output of the other lines, and for that you can use a semicolon at the end of every line that you don't want to see when you run it line by line in the REPL. And that's the end of lesson three.